So we are going to be finishing up the unit circle today. But let's go through and let's talk about a few things that we've learned in this whole lesson. So first things first, we learned what a reference angle was. Okay, so you have to be good at drawing an angle in standard position. Remember, standard position, vertex is at the origin at zero, zero. You then draw your terminal side to where the rotation of that angle ends. And then to find the reference angle, we just have to go to the closest x-axis. And then we strategically picked angles that we knew that would work with 30, 60, 45, and then really on it's 90 and 180 as well, which is zero. So we kept them pretty simple. You had to be really good when you're working with it. Then we talked about reference triangles. And the chart that we use is using the idea of a unit circle. And I need everyone to hear what a unit circle is. In fact, I think I'm going to write it down here so we're all on the same page. Okay? What is going to be a unit circle? All right? A circle, by the way, the symbol for circle is a circle with the center in it a circle on an xy coordinate plane. All right? So unit circle has to be on the coordinate plane. Its center has to be on the what? Center on origin. Also, its radius has a length of one Thus, a unit circle. Then, we are creating and being able to find all the sine, cosine, and tangent values on a unit circle using our reference triangles of 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90, and 60, 30, 90 triangles. And we were just at the point about building those up. So the idea of a reference triangle saves us a lot of time. Now, also patterns that we took the time to build up uh, with radians and with degrees all come into play here. So here's the thing you need to know. A unit circle gives you your sine, cosine, and tangent for basically angles and degrees or angles and radians. So we can be quick reference and have exact answers basically so you don't have to touch your calculator okay is what we're trying to get to and at the bottom of this page if i remember correctly we did build in the following and i said here's the other thing you need to know on a unit circle when i'm looking for the cosine of an angle the cosine value is always going to be the x coordinate of my ordered pair when i draw that rotation on my unit circle. The sine value of an angle's measurement is always the y coordinate on a unit circle. And to find the tangent, we always know it's y over x, which is sine theta over cosine theta. Now we were just at the spot of building this completely. Okay. So I'm going to rebuild this one just so we're all on the same page. So I want to find where this first angle is. Well, this first angle is over here, see if I can get this to move, but this is really a pain. Sorry about that, you guys. Did you make your door wide? Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's you're good. Really Sorry. Oh, that just makes me smile. Sorry. All right. The worst. All right. When we work with this, and I'm looking for <coughs> the sine and cosine of a 30 degree angle, we draw our radius to the point on the circle, and we're like, okay, here's my reference angle of 30 degrees. So when I look, at my reference stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm using this angle because that's my reference angle of 30 degrees. <laughs> then I go to that point and I draw in my reference triangle. And we're like, oh yeah, reference triangle. We know the lengths of the sides. And we're like, oh yeah, the longer side on the reference triangle, if you look at the top of your notes, is root three over two and this one's one half. So when I look at this, my ordered pair for this point is the horizontal distance, vertical distance, root 3 over 2, which is going to be cosine of 30, and 1 half, which is sine of 30. All right, got us all to where we were yesterday. Like yesterday, sorry. <coughs> where we were on what day was that? Friday. Now, let's do the next one. All right, now we want to draw the one for our 45 degree angle. So that means we're going to do this one. Okay, 
So up to 45 degrees, that would be our reference angle. I'm drawing my one unit hypotenuse. And if I drew this straight down, guys, did we create, once again, a 45, 45, 90 triangle? All right? And we know the hypotenuse of the congruent circle is 1. On that reference triangle, I had you drawn the top of it, what was the horizontal side length? Root 2 over 2, right? What was the vertical side length? Root 2 over 2. Which means my ordered pair here is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Which means the cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Or the cosine of, I mean sine, excuse me, of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Or instead of saying it in degrees, we say it in radians. The cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Because anytime I see something over 4, I know my reference angle is 45 degrees. So it's developed using that triangle. Now we have one more triangle that we got to use that is going to be developed. And I'm going to do this one. I think it was done in the eye earlier. Okay. So now what if I want a 60 degree angle or AKA pi thirds? Well, my radius is still one. If I draw in my reference triangle here, and I knew that was 60. Oh, the length of my horizontal side this time is one half. The length of my vertical side is what? root 3 over 2. So my ordered pair is 1 half root 3 over 2. So here's my question. What's the cosine of pi over 3? 1 half. 1 half. What's the sine of pi over 3? root 3 over 2. Because x value gives you cosine, y value gives you sine. With me so far? Okay, let's keep going to the next one. Now, you all should know for 90 degrees. You should all know. Friends, if I'm landing right here on the y-axis, what's the ordered pair? Perfect. That's 0, 1. Now, here's my question for you. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? 0. What is the sine of 90 degrees? Now that you know that, you can do the whole circle because you have common sense. Are you guys ready for the common sense moment? Are you ready? Okay, so when you're working with a coordinate plane, don't write this down. This will get yours too messy. I'm just going to write this down so this makes a little more sense for you guys. When we have a coordinate plane, this is x, y. But don't we have positive and negative? Yeah, this would be positive, this would be positive. What's this one over here? Negative, and we go what? Does that change when I throw a circle into my coordinate plane? No. In fact, it actually helps us figure out stuff about how to, to recreate the wheel. So, for instance, let me show you where we're going next with this. If I was to rotate around this circle, we are going to get 2, the fact we get 2 pi over 3. Now, when we think about this, what is the reference angle? for 2 pi over 3, or a.k.a. 120 degrees. 60, right? Because this is 60. Oh, wait. That means I'm going to use which reference triangle over here? The 60, 30, 90 one, right? Okay, and now this is how easy this is. Do I have it over here? The values don't change. This is a 1 half. This is root 3 over 2. The only thing that changes is positive or negatives. In the second quadrant, is x coordinates negative? Congratulations, you now have that one. It is literally a negative one half root three over two. So here's my question for you. What is the cosine of two pi thirds? What's the sine of two pi thirds? Oh, you mean the same thing as over here, just flipped? Well, look at the next one. 3 pi over 4. Guys, what's going to be my reference angle for 3 pi over 4? Which is, this is 135. What's your reference angle? Oh, so you mean I'm going to use the 45, 45, 90 triangle? Yeah, 
so it stays the same. I got root 2 over 2, but what does the x coordinate have to be? All right, I bet you guys are starting to see a pattern a little bit over here. All right, what about our last one? What about if I go 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6? What's my reference angle? Oh, 30. So that means I use the exact same ones as over here, but again, the x is negative and the y is positive. So if I ask you for the sign of 5 pi over 6, you guys would tell me? No. Sign of 5 pi over 6. Positive what? Now, if I say cosine of 5 pi over 6, you guys would tell me what? Negative root 3 over what? 2. Guys, the pattern continues throughout this whole thing. Now, everyone should know, if I'm over here on the unit circle, what would be my ordered pair for this one over here? Yeah, negative 1, 0, because I'm going to distance to the left of 1, and I land on the x-axis, I mean negative 1, 0. Oh, wait, notice on the other side there's a positive it over. Now, using the same patterns, I want you to think about this last one right here. Guys, what are my x and y coordinates in a coordinate plane in the third quadrant? My x value is what? And what's my y value? So they both become what? Negative, negative. Now, they just still use the same thing. Oh look, 120 degrees. What's my reference angle? 30. Oh, that means I use these two values, but they're both negative. A negative root 3 over 2 and a negative 1 half. Guys, 225 degrees or 5 pi over 4, just over 1, right? What's your reference angle? 45. So what are going to be my two values that I use for this? Yeah, I'm going to do a negative root 2 over 2 and a negative what? Root 2 over 2. All right, perfect. Let's keep on going. All right, 40. 240 is going to be my reference angle ends up being what, my friend? 60. 60. Oh, so do I know the numbers I should be able to put in for those? Yeah. We know that it's for 60 degrees, so this is going to end up being root 3 over 2. This is 1 half, but they both have to be what? You see, if you actually know the first quadrant, should I be able to get the other one? Yes. If I understand positive and negatives enough on this, we should be able to get it. All right, guys, what's my ordered pair down here? For 3 pi over 2 or 220 degrees, what's the ordered pair? Zero, Zero. awesome, negative one. All right, let's keep rotating around. Now, think about the values in the fourth quadrant. Your x's are what? But your y's are? Awesome. Guys, 300 degrees. What's my reference angle for that one? Oh, 60. Which means, are we using the 60 degree angle measurements up above as well? So we got here a positive 1 half, but a negative what? Perfect. All right. Can anyone tell me what the values are going to go in for 350 degrees or 7 pi over 4? Yeah, root 2 over 2. Oops, I want to make sure I put it in the right line. So far, sorry. Root 2 over 2 because it's positive for the x value, but it's negative for the y. It's a negative root 2 over 2. And then our last value is 11 pi over 6, or aka 330 degrees. What's your reference angle? 30, so I know I'm going to use this triangle, right? And we know we have a positive root 3 over 2, but a negative what? 1 half. Guys, you now know sine and cosine for the whole unit circle. Now, let's make it really easy. What's the one value we haven't talked about yet that we use all the time? Tangent. Okay? Now, look down below. What did I tell you about tangent? Tangent is either known as y over x or sine over what? Which means we can do math with fractions to get the answers. And again, if I know the values in the first quadrant, I can just reflect or change values, positive or negative, based off of where I land. So here's 
let's figure out the first value. So let's go here. I'm going to tangent theta. I'm going to do it in, I'm going to highlight it in yellow just to make you guys' lives a little bit easier to see this, okay? So tangent theta. We got to start at, which is a little bit different than what you guys done before, 1 over 0. So we have here cosine, sine, tangent. To find tangent of 0 degrees, isn't that sine of 0 over cosine of 0? Which is what? What's sine? So that's 0 over 1, which is? So this is 0. So the tangent is 0. Now, let's figure it out for 30 degrees. So I'm going over here, the tangent of 30 degrees, that's sine of 30 over cosine of 30. And this is where you just have to be decent with fractions. Guys, sine of 30 is 1 half. What's cosine of 30? Or 3 over 2. Now, friends, when you're working with this, if I divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by a 20. So that becomes 1 over root 3. Now, because we're good mathematicians, do I read radical in the denominator of fractions? No, we rationalize. And you have to multiply both by root 3 over 3, and you're going to get root 3 over 3. That is your tangent of 30 degrees. Now, the cool thing is the next one's really easy. Guys, <coughs> tangent of 45 degrees or pi over 4 is sine over cosine. Root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 is what value? Oops, I'm sure I highlighted it. That's what I wanted to do. There's 1. Okay, now let's keep on going through. How do I do the next one here? That's the tangent of 60, which means that's really the sine of 60 over what? Cone of 60. Cosine. Cosine. I can talk now. Cosine of 60. So root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Oh, look. That's root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. That's just root what? Root 2. Oops. I can't do my highlighter today. Okay, now I want you to think of the next one. What happens if I go sine over cosine for 90? What values do we get? 1 over what? Can we do that? So we call that undefined. So the tangent, notice we don't say no solution anymore because it's still describing the value. It's undefined. Now, guys. I want you to be really smart about this, okay? And this is how fast you're gonna get the other side. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit. Can anyone tell me what should be the tangent of two pi over three over here? It's gonna be what, negative what? Yep, how did you get that? Yeah, exactly, you do the exact same process, but a positive divided by negative is Okay, how about for my cosine, my, not my cosine, my tangent for 3 pi over 4, or 135? It's going to be a negative what? You. Okay, you guys are catching the patterns with this real quickly. What is going to be the tangent of 150 degrees, or aka 5 pi over 6? Negative root 3 over Okay, next value, 180 degrees, friends. Come on, where's the thing that I wrote that one? It's zero, right? Because zero divided by negative one is still what? Zero. Okay, question. What should be my tangent values in the third quadrant? I heard negative, I heard positive. Which one is it? Because negative divided by negative is? All right. So all of these are going to end up being positive. Now, guys, I'm not going to leave you stranded. I'm going to help you have a cute little way of memorizing this in a moment. Okay. 
But I'm sure cute sometimes, huh? you know, we'll, we'll go and worry about it. All right, so what's this one going to be over here for 7 pi over 6? 3 over 3. What is it going to be for 5 pi over 4? 1. What is it going to be for 4 pi over 3 or 240 degrees? 3 over 3. Okay. What is it going to be for 3 pi over 2 or 270? And guys, you can easily calculate this. Sine over cosine or y over x. Undefined. Excellent. All right. I bet you guys are probably figuring out the patterns for this. I'll put these here. All right. Who thinks they know what the tangent of 5 pi over 3 is? Paul. Positive or negative? Uh, negative. So you have negative root of root. Right on. All right. Sorry, what was that? Yes. yes. <laughs> Be careful when you raise your hand in my glass, people. Okay. Lick it. I said what's the root? Well, I didn't even understand the first one. So it said one half of a root root of two. And then you said multiply by the reciprocal, so that's closer. So now it's two over root three. No, the first one isn't the reciprocal. When you divide by a fraction, it's the second one. Mm -hmm. Which one are you looking at? What angle? Uh, tangent 30 plus 30 plus 30. Okay, so let's just use the value that we have right here. Okay, on this one. So we know tangent, and I'm just going to go 11 pi over 6, but they can be the other one, is 7 sine of 11 pi over 6 over cosine of 11 pi over 6, which is our cosine is root 3 over 2, and our sine is a negative. Okay, when you divide by a fraction, the one half isn't what flips. It's the name, it stays, but the bottom one. So it's 2 over root 3. So it's negative 1 over root 3. Then we rationalize the denominator because you don't need radicals in the denominator. So it's negative root 3 over 3. So literally, you can just go y over x in the ordered pair. Did that help a little bit, Lincoln? Guys, what did we get for 7 pi over 4? You now have sine, cosine, tangent for your whole unit circle. Someone goes, I have to memorize all that? I want you to think about it for a moment. What do you actually have to memorize? If you remember the first quadrant and you can keep track of positive and negatives, should you be okay? So the key is knowing your first quadrant and then knowing where those are. So I'm going to see if I can, we're going to come back to that chart here real quick. We're going to do a lot of that chart. It's just going to show up today. Okay. Let's see if we can do this to make sense down below. Okay. All right. Excuse my yawn. Actually, I feel way more rested than I did last Tuesday coming in. I don't know why. It's not like I didn't rest that far over the weekend. Okay, let's see if we can pull all this stuff together. All right, when we're working with trig functions, and I'm in with a unit circle, so think all of this unit what? Unit circle. When we're working with the sine of it, we're literally doing sine is what value? One. One, right? Now, you could also say y over r, but what's our radius value every single time? One. So we just say one. What's our cosine value going to be? x and our tangent is just what I like writing it like this because this will help you later but it's just y over what all right we're gonna worry about the reciprocals later okay you just need to get the first three down first and the first three are what's gonna be on your well I think the circle because we actually might have a little bit more but let's see if we can go now we're gonna fill out the other stuff in a moment here's I told you I'm gonna give you a cute little egg cutesy way of memorizing this, okay? Here's the phrase I want you to all memorize. All students take calculus. And what we're going to do is we're going to represent the first letter when you do this. Now, when you think of all students take calculus, put it on a coordinate plane 
and go around like you would normal angles, so counterclockwise. So all students take turning calculus. Here's what those letters mean. The letter represents what is positive in that quadrant. A stands for all, so all of my ratios are what? Positive. Now, so when we do that, that's your all. Now, what does S represent when we look at each ratio? Sine, right? So all students is sine. Well, sine is positive, so that means my other two are negative. All right? What was the only thing when we were doing it earlier? What does T stand for? Yeah, that stands for tangent. So it's positive, but guess what my other two are? Negative. And then in my fourth quadrant, C stands for what one of them? Cosine. So cosine is positive, but that means my other two are negative. <coughs> All students take calculus. Helps you keep track of your positive and negative signs. All right, I think we've got this down. All right, so now we're going to go back to that big ugly chart. Now, I must admit, if I had more time, that big ugly chart would change because I don't want to create a big new ugly chart. All right, when we talk about a unit circle, some people do not do a good use the circle itself as a good tool. They just need to flat out memorize. There's some of you, it's just pure memorization that you need to do this. But we should be able to get there with our patterns and stuff that we have first. So we're gonna build this, what we just did, quickly on the unit circle. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna do your equivalence between radians and degrees. And let's see if you guys can remember where these go. All right, zero degrees is how many radians? Go pretty profound, isn't it? Okay, remember our patterns. If I have 30 degrees, what is my number that's on the denominator of my fraction with radians? I heard it, it's what? Six. So the very first one, because it's in the first quadrant, is pi over six. So anything that is has a 30 <coughs> degrees, we know is gonna be over six. Okay, 45 degrees, what is that value? Pi over 4, 60 degrees, what do we get? Pi over 3, 90 degrees was pi over 2. So we're stopping there with the first quadrant. Guys, reference angles. Do not make these hard. 0, 30, 45, and 1. 60. Okay. And then we know pi over 2 is just considered 90 degrees of angle. Okay. Now, I want to see if you guys can do these radians quickly. Guys, radians, 120 degrees. What quadrant did I just land into? Second one. If it's 120, what is the reference angle? To get to 180 is what? 60. Okay. What does that mean? My radian has to be over. Three. Second quadrant, just under what number? So what is going to be my value there? Are you guys seeing the pattern? 135 degrees. What's my reference angle? 45. Which means anytime I have a 45 degree reference angle, it's going to be in radians with a 4 in the denominator. Second quadrant, just under 1, which would be 4 over 4. So what would that be? So that would be 3 pi over 4. Okay. Probably you're catching on. 150, what's my reference angle? 30. And then 150, what would that be in radians? All right, 180 doesn't really help as much, but we know that is what value? Pi. And what is its reference angle? We just say zero because it's only one. All right, do you think we could fill these out real quickly? Because we got to go fast. You guys ready? Okay, 210, what's your reference angle? Yep, I heard 30. So it's going to be over what? 
over six for 30. Anytime you have 30 degrees, it's reference, it's gradients, it's over six. In the third quadrant, and you're now not at one, we're just what? So what's just bigger than six? 75 over six. 225, what's your reference angle? 45, so this is four. What's gonna be our value? Five over four. All right, keep going, 240. What was that? Yeah. And then 270, we just know that's 3 pi over 2, and it's reference in 90. Okay, we're almost done, guys. 300 degrees. What's your reference angle? Reference angle. 60. Wasn't big enough. All right. So then we have it over 3, right? But remember, in the fourth quadrant, we're just under what number? So 2 times 3 is 6, so just under that is... 315. Isn't its reference angle 45? So it's going to be over 4. What is it going to be? 2 times 4 is 8. Just under that is going to be what number? 7. 7 pi over 4. So it's just under 2. 330. It's 30, right? 330 is 30. What's going to be my radian? Yep, 11 pi over 6. Excellent. And the last but not least, 360. We know it's reference angle 0, it's going to be 2 pi. Okay, now guys, here is your sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, here's the thing you need to be not tricked by. This chart tells you where all of those are. And we're just going to fill in the first quadrant, and then we're going to do your um, homework together. Sine of 0 degrees, we know that is 0. Cosine of zero degrees was one. Tangent was, what do you think sine over cosine is? Zero. All right, when we're doing 30 degrees, when we find sine, that is one half. Cosine is root three over two. Your tangent was root three over three. Now, this is from the circle. I'm getting this from the circle, okay? The only thing you gotta remember is sine and cosine are not in order. 45 degrees. You guys remember what our values were for 45 every single time around? Yep, root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. What was tangent every single time for 45? 1. We just had positive or negative as before. 60. Sine of 60. Yep, root 3 over 2. Cosine is 1 half. Tangent would be 3, 3. And then 90. We know the sine is 1, cosine is 0, and tangent is under 5. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to come in, and not tomorrow, Thursday, and we'll see. We're going to fill in the rest of this chart. All this whole chart will be filled in. Now, do you guys have your homework, right? So let me show you how to use the unit circle or the chart to do your homework. Here's the one thing you cannot use, a calculator. Did everyone hear me on this? Now, if I was doing this as a student, what would be right next to me would be my notes. Because I could always check myself as we go. Trying to make sure I've gotten plenty of time to hurry up. Yep, we're doing pretty good. I don't plan to do every problem. Are you guys with me on this? But I'm going to show you how to think it through. This will basically be what a, your, your unit circle quizzes are going to be like. I am just going to give you an angle, either in degrees or radians, and you have to tell me the sine, cosine, or tangent, and eventually secant, cosecant, and cotangent of any of these. So let me explain how to think this through. And these chart practices are for you to do that. Now, is this the one that you guys had as well? Or is yours say 180 there? I can't remember. Is it the same as mine? Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure that I was not giving you the wrong chart. Okay, so guys, let's look at number two. Okay, now this one is in degrees. I don't know about you, but you're probably still comfortable in degrees. Am I correct? All right, here's my question. What quadrant are you in? Okay, here's my question. Is cosine positive or negative in the second quadrant? Remember our saying, all students take what? So it needs to be what? 
negative because sine is positive. So I know right away, before I do anything, I know it's negative. Note that I even have to know my value, I still know it's negative because it is positive. Then my next my question is, what's your reference angle? Now, looking on your unit circle or on the chart, what is the cosine of 30 degrees? Cosine of 30. I heard it, it's the x value of what? Root 3 over what? 2. Negative root 3 over 2 because I'm in the second quadrant. Now, if you look at the unit circle and you rotate all the way down here in 50 degrees, what's your x value? Isn't it negative root 3 over 2? Yeah, guys, it's right there. But notice, did I even really look at my unit circle? No, I just did everything off the first quadrant and knowing positive and negative. Let me give you one right here. Um, let's fix it there a little bit. Okay, let's look at seven. Sine of 225 degrees. What quadrant are we in? We're at three, third quadrant. Would you guys agree? Okay. Is sine positive or negative in the third quadrant? Negative, because all students take. So tangent is positive, but everything else is negative. So notice before I even look at reference angle or whatever, do I know if it's a positive or negative answer? Yeah, yeah that's the cool part. And when I grade your quizzes, I look to see, do they get the positive or negative right? And then do they get the number right? That's like a two point. So now I'm like, what's your reference angle? It's 45. Okay, guys. Isn't that the same thing as pi over four? In the first quadrant. What is the sine of 45 in the first quadrant? So in the third quadrant, the sine of 225 degrees is a negative root 2 over 2. Are you guys seeing how this is going? Notice, do I ever, am I looking at anything but really talking about the first quadrant? If you know first quadrant, should you be able to derive the rest? Okay, now let's make this a little bit harder. How about if we do this in radians? Don't let it get harder. In fact, sometimes it makes it easier. Someone's like, Gregison, what is wrong with you? Let me explain. Look at number 20. Guys, you can tell me the reference angle without having to do any calculations whatsoever. If you're over 4, what is your reference angle? Five pi over four. What quadrant are you in? What's so special about tangent in the third quadrant? It's positive. Okay, now let's make it easy. What's the tangent of 45 degrees? No, tangent. It's sine over cosine. So root two over two divided by root two over two is what value? Notice, I might be using radians, but what am I going back into my brain every single time? Degrees. I'm using my reference angle every single time. But I'm so good at looking. I know, it sounds like I'm bragging. I'm so good at this. No, but once you understand how to pick out reference angles, isn't it pretty easy? Let's try another one. Um, let's just do Guys, 13 or 16, your choice. 16. 16? Okay. Let's do 16. Okay. When you look at this, this is sine of 11 pi over 6. What's your reference angle? If it's over 6, it's 30 quadrant. Because it's just under what? 2, the number 2, right? And in the fourth quadrant, is sine positive or negative? Oh, you guys got this. Okay. What is the sine of 30 degrees? It's one half. So it's a negative one half for the sine of 11 pi over 6. Did that get you started on homework? Okay. Now, here's the scary part that all has to be memorized before next Monday. So let's start reviewing now. Great job, guys. Proud of you.